Hello, welcome to another Mayan Technologies video. My name is Ana Munoz. I am a manufacturing consultant, and today I will be showing you the MES screen. This screen is used on the production floor so that operators can record which jobs they are working on, how much time they spend on them, and also identify which jobs are pending so they can continue working on them. The first step an operator must take upon arriving at the plant is to log in. This will inform the system that we have started working, not necessarily on a specific job or activity, but that we are now in our work shift. We enter our employee number and the system automatically identifies our shift, which is displayed here. Now, let's suppose we have identified which job we will be working on. There are two ways to start a job. The first would be to do it directly. In Start Production, we click and we will see that the system asks us which job we will be working on, the assembly, and the operation. If we know the job number directly, we can enter it, or if we want to search for it, we click on the magnifying glass and apply filters. We can filter based on how our job begins, by job type or by status. In this case, I will search by status to find an open job and click search. Here we can identify all open jobs. We click OK, identify the assembly number we will be working on, as well as the operation. Now we will see that our queue has been assigned. This indicates that we have clocked into that specific job. From this moment, time starts counting. This is when we should begin manual work on the product we are creating. Now, let's suppose I finish this job and want to inform the system that I am done so it can be moved to the next area. First, I need to select which job I am finishing. We will see this black symbol in this area, indicating which record we are selecting. If I select it, I must then click on End Activity. This option has three fields where we can enter the quantity we are producing or have completed. If we have any quantity to report as scrap or any amount that should be reported as non-conformance. Suppose I finished a quantity of one, I enter the amount and click OK. Notice how that line has now disappeared from my queue and it will now be visible for the next required process. Now we can see in this section that there are different types of start. We already reviewed start production. Now let's look at start setup. Suppose, for example, that we are working with a CNC machine. This machine needs a program to be loaded into it. This time, when we are not applying any process to the product, but rather preparing our tools and machines to start working, is known as setup. The system also has the capability to separate these two times for reporting or analysis purposes. The process is the same. We need to identify which job we will be working on, the assembly, and the operation. A new record will be generated here, with the only difference being that our labor type will be set up. The same applies to start indirect. Let's say we don't currently have any jobs to work on, production is slow, but we can log our time, for example, while cleaning the area. By clicking here, we can see which codes our company has enabled as indirect activities. If I search here, we will see the ones already loaded into the system. For example, if we will be cleaning the area, I will select that option. Likewise, I must define which resource I will be logging this time to. We can search directly by resource department or any of the options. I will use this one as an example. Click OK and we see how that line has been added to our queue. This means our time is now counting specifically for that activity, not for a direct job, but for cleaning. Now suppose I have finished cleaning. I would click End Activity again. The difference here is that we do not have quantity fields available. This is because we are not producing anything. 
we just click OK, and it would be the same process for Start Rework. Click and see the available rework options. Assign the job, assembly, and operation, then click OK. Again, we would have a record added to our queue. Now suppose, for this example, I want to show that I already have a line here. This means I have been working since 1.16 p.m. Time is counting, but what if an external situation prevents me from continuing with this task? Or if I need a break? Epicor also has an option to stop time and indicate to the system that production is paused. We select the line and click on the downtime button. Here, our company can define the codes we will enter as downtime. For example, some clients enter breakdowns, programming, or preventive maintenance here. When we click and select the available options, the system will disable the other options because we are in downtime. We will only be able to resume normal operations when we click End Downtime, and our options will become available again. Epicor also allows us to go directly to our job tracker from this screen. By clicking this button, we can access the same screen we open from Epicor directly, where we can see job information. Since this is a tracker, it is read only, but it allows production floor personnel to check job details, identify materials used, and see previous or upcoming operations. It is very useful for workers to have this consultation tool. The same applies to the part tracker screen. Clicking here will bring up the part screen which is also read only. We can check information on all part numbers registered in the system without the risk of altering any data. At the beginning, I mentioned that there are two ways to start production. The first was through start production and the second is through work queue. This screen shows available jobs that we can continue working on. In active, we see what is currently active. In queue, we see what is available. You may notice that nothing is displayed yet. This is because I have not selected a department or resource. Operators can work in different areas, such as assembly or painting. They must tell the system which area they are in to see the available jobs. Click on the menu, select search, and look up by resource or department. Let's try searching by department. Click search, and suppose I am now in assembly. I select it, click OK, then search again. I will see all the resource IDs assigned to the assembly department. I select the option I will be working in, click OK, and now the system will show available jobs. We see different statuses, all which shows us the extra options we have here. Current shows jobs where the previous operation has been completed. Available shows jobs where the previous operation is not fully finished, but there is some quantity available for work. Expected shows jobs that will eventually arrive at my area. Usually we work with current. Once we have the job selected, we choose the job I'll be working with specifically, given that it shows us the job number, assembly, and operation. We can select all records or individual ones, Suppose I select this one and click Start Activity. I can start it as a setup or production depending on what I am doing. In this case, I will select Production. Closing the Work screen, I see that this job has been added, meaning it is now available to work on. And now I could click End Activity, depending if I did a certain quantity or not. Let's suppose I didn't produce anything here, I can end it as well. And the same goes for the one we already had from the previous example. At the end of the day, operators must log out so the MS system is ready for the next worker. This also informs the system that the shift is over. Logging out is simple, just click Log Out and the system is ready for the next operator. That's it! I hope this video was helpful. Don't forget to like and follow us.